Hello, and welcome back to Crime Labs. Today, we will be covering the murder of Mary Collins. If you would like to hear more information about this case, please visit the Cola City Crime Podcast in the description below. This case took place in Charlotte, North Carolina in March 2020. If you remember, this is when COVID-19 hit the U.S. and the world shut down. The governor of North Carolina issued a stay-at-home order. During this time, Mary Collins went missing, and her grandmother, Mia Alderman, immediately knew something was wrong. Mary was 20 years old, but she had a rare genetic disorder called 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome, caused by a missing section of chromosome 22. Due to this disorder, Mary had a cleft palate, which was repaired at age 3, and had a lingering speech impediment. She also needed help with daily activities and did not drive. She had a close relationship with her grandmother, loved music and photography, and loved to make people happy. On March 28th, Mary's friends, Lavi and Kelly, ordered an Uber for her. Lavi and Kelly attended high school with Mary and were in a relationship. They preyed on Mary for months, making Mary feel like she had adult friendships and like she was valued. Lavi posted photos on their social media account of Lavi, Kelly, and Mary together. Mary's grandmother was getting increasingly worried as Mary's phone was off and she hadn't heard from Mary. She went to Lavi's apartment to find Mary, but Lavi told her that Mary left around 11 a.m. She began yelling for Mary, afraid she was in the apartment, and she began looking around the front room of the apartment before Lavi told her to leave. She looked around outside, continually calling Mary's name, and called 911. The 911 operator instructed Mary's grandmother to go home and told her they would send police to the apartment. She complied and went home, trusting the police would bring Mary home. The officer went to Lavi's apartment, knocked, and did not receive an answer, so they left and filed a missing persons report. Detective Gaskin was assigned to the case. He reached out to Mary's grandmother, who told the detective about Mary's disability, but Detective Gaskin said he wouldn't be going to the apartment that day. Mary's grandmother took matters into her own hands and called the apartment manager, who allowed her to look at the camera footage. The apartment manager was told to stop searching the camera footage by police until they obtained a warrant. Mary's mother also visited the apartment and requested to look inside. Lavi agreed, and she saw someone laying in the bed. Lavi stated it was his girlfriend, Kelly, sleeping. Police told a local news station they believed Mary wasn't in danger. Five days after Mary disappeared, Detective Gaskin conducted a search of the apartment and found nothing. Mary's uncle contacted the CEO of the apartment complex and obtained copies of the video footage. There was no footage of Mary ever leaving the apartment. On April 4th, around 10 p.m., Mary's grandmother got a call that an ambulance was at the apartment. She was relieved to see Mary and hoped she was okay, but by the end of the call, she realized she misunderstood. Mary was murdered, she had been tortured, and stabbed at least 133 times. She was then wrapped in plastic wrap and duct tape and hid in a mattress. Detective Gaskin searched this bed when he visited the apartment. Later, it was revealed that the only reason police came back to the apartment was because a witness called to report Mary's murder and reported her body was in the mattress with intentions of burning it later. James called the police twice before they took action. Lavi, Kelly, and another friend, America, who helped with cleanup, were all arrested and are currently awaiting trial. Mary's family created a grassroots movement called Mary's Voice. The organization is working to change police policies and procedures to help people with disabilities. They want to shed light on what is happening in our justice system, including victims' rights. For more information, go to www.marysvoice.com or see the links in the description. In the words of Mary's grandmother, I cannot simply remember Mary. She is a part of my own soul. Let's hold a moment of silence for Mary Collins. Tune into the Cola City Crime Podcast in the links in the description to hear more about this case. Thanks for watching Crime Labs. Please visit our channel to watch our playlists.